settled in here. Let's get this thing started. So, uh, as you guys know at this point, this is the World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria preview panel. And, uh, yeah! So, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be speaking to you for quite some time to try to give you a lot more detail about what we're doing here with our, our upcoming expansion. Um, we're going to give you some philosophy behind, you know, the, the things we're trying to accomplish with the expansion. And then, also, we're going to talk in great detail about the features themselves because, you know, as you might have seen, those names of features going by in that, uh, in that trailer might leave you wondering, well, what are they talking about? What are they? So, uh, without further ado, what is World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria? And our prime objective here is we, we want to be combining new gameplay with the most fun parts of the past. Um, I think it's a fair criticism that, that, that some people have leveled against Cataclysm saying that, you know what, there, there weren't a whole lot of new things to do at the end game, right? So you, you level up through the new stuff, or you re-roll and you go through the, the, the very much changed world. But at the end game, it's you know the same kind of stuff that you've been doing for years and years, hopefully at least. Um, so we want to make sure that we introduce some some really fun new things for you guys to do uh, to to kind of keep things exciting at the end game. So uh, there we are, new things to do. That's a core part of uh, blending exciting things of the past with new things of the future. Um, this is uh, just a quick. Like the, the image there is just a snapshot of, uh, of an idea that we have that we're uh, working on called the challenge modes. Another core philosophy that we have is getting people back into the world. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little bit tired of seeing the inside of Stormwind and Overmar all the time. <laughs> Great cities and all very lovely places, but uh, standing in the city queuing for stuff, uh, you know, all the time can can get a little bit old, so, you know, just like a lot of you guys, it sounds like, we want to get people back out into the world at, at max level and, and experiencing the world, and, and you know, that, that means a lot of different things. Uh, it means getting out there and, and having a fun questing experience. It means getting out there and doing stuff like a uh, picture here. We've got an old school shot of Azure Ghost. So uh, one of the things that we're planning to do is to kind of reintroduce the concept of these, these outdoor world raid mobs for players to fight. And of course, uh, where there are outdoor world raid mobs that people are fighting on, uh, on PvP servers, that means that there will be people there trying to grief the people doing the outdoor world raid fighting. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit of that Port Alliance conflict Chris was referring to. So another core philosophy that we have is that we want you to be able to do what you want to do to progress your character. Um, over time, World of Warcraft has uh, kind of blossomed with all these different things to do, and we're going to be adding more different things to do. Um, and we really want the game to feel like there's a menu of content, and that you can pick and choose what kind of content you want to do, and you're not necessarily pigeonholed into the content that you feel like you have to do in order to be able to progress your character. So, what we're trying to say here is that we want you to be able to progress your character whether or not you're raiding, doing dungeons, or even doing daily quests, for example. And so that's what that little image is there. Um, you know, you got a little quest turn in there. Imagine that's a daily quest that you're turning in, and you're getting Valor points out of it. Um, so that way you can actually get Valor points and, and progress your character, even if you're just the guy that wants to go out there and quest. Granted, it'll be faster if you're doing rage or if you're doing, uh, you know, hard mode rage, all that kind of stuff, heroic rage, but, but uh, you'll still be able to make progress all the time. Next, we really want you to be able to geek out with more interesting character builds than ever before. Um, I, was, uh, I was there back in uh, 2004 when we created the talent system. Uh, in fact, that was kind of my job, was to create the talent system that, that you guys have experienced over the last many, many years. Um, and uh, we had this vision, right? We, we, back then, it was, in, it was in the friends and family alpha that, that we were getting constant feedback. You know, this was before we had a talent system. Um, or at least one that, that you know of today. And we would get constant feedback about players wanting to be able to customize their character more. You know, they wanted to be able to stand next to another character of the same class and feel like they were a little bit different, that they made some choices and that those choices were meaningful and uh, that, that that led to a, their gameplay experience feeling a little bit different and that their character was special. 
So with that in mind, we went out and we created the original talent system. Um, it, uh, I, I would say that it was, you know, the talent system was, uh, was pretty cool. It, you know, we drew a lot from stuff like the Diablo 2 skills system, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, I don't actually feel like it's aged as well as I, I wish it had. Um, I feel like, you know, we've been, we've been plagued over the years with cookie cutter builds, right? And how much choice do you really have when you step into your raid or whatever and your raid leader's telling you, well, you know, those four points that you spent right there are going to cost you, you know, 4% DPS and we really can't have that, so you're going to have to take a hike, that sort of thing. So uh, we want to try to make sure that we refine what we call the talent system to get to the point where we don't have the cookie cutter builds that we have today and that the choices that you're making are significant choices for your character, but that you actually have a lot of flexibility about how to set up your character and how to play it. So we'll be uh, going into a lot more detail in this talk and, and also in the talent panel um, with uh, exactly what that is. So uh, with that, we have the introduction, of course, to the continent of Pandaria. So Corey's going to step up and, and tell you guys all about the continent itself. Hey, guys. So everyone knows where you're going to be playing. You know what, you've heard what Pandaria is, but now we want to show you and tell you about what you're actually going to be playing and what is this place. So it's going to be five new zones of level up zones is what we're looking at for the continent itself. Um, another thing that we're changing here is the fact that we're going to go back to a single unified continent. So if you remember back to Burning Crusade or you think about Northrend, we had one single continent with all the zones together. With Cataclysm, we changed that up a little bit and our zones were separated in different places. We kind of felt like that didn't make it feel like one unified place. Instead, it felt a little separated and not, just didn't have that same vibe. So with Pandaria, we're going to be going back to that same kind of hit where you've got all the zones and they're going to make one unified place. As you've probably seen from the uh, cinematic, we've clearly got an Asian influence on the landscapes and the environments and everything you're seeing here. It's been super cool just to see the, the, the artists at Blizzard take that and turn it really into a unique World of Warcraft style. Because you could take that and just, you know, kind of make it look specifically Chinese or Asian or one specific look, but we've really put that World of Warcraft look at it, so when people see it, they instantly think, wow. Another thing that's going to be a little different that we haven't done actually really since um, Burning Crusade is we're going to have an auction house in the new continent. So actually on Pandaria, you'll have an auction house that you'll have access to. Now granted, you know, you're still going to need to go to Stormwind or Orgrimmar for certain things that you're going to need to do, but we want people to have that convenience that if you're at the new continent and you like playing there, you should be able to stay there in Pandaria. You shouldn't necessarily have to always be going back all the time. Um, and another thing we're going to be changing is we're not going to have flying <laughs> until max level. And it's great to see that response because that's really how we feel about it. Um, I don't know about you, but for us, you know, it's just questing. Every time you kill a mob, you've got to get in your mount, fly up in the air, fly over something, land back down again, dismount, fly, then mount up again. You know, even though it feels convenient and fast, in the long run, we just don't really feel like it gives the best questing experience that you could have. So by going back to this, we really feel like we're going to get a better core quest experience. So here's a look at the continent as a whole. This is a, you guys have, anyone that's been to BlizzCon before has probably seen this. This is how we start out our design process. We lay out everything in 2D and get a feel for how it's going to play out. So you can see the five zones here. We've kind of got a, a central valley, the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Um, we've got dungeons across all the different zones. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about two of these zones. Uh, the Jade Forest, which is our intro, our start zone, and then the Valley of the Four Winds there on the south side. Um, one thing that's cool is we've really been working on this for a while, so we've got a lot of stuff to show you guys. I think this is probably the first BlizzCon we're going to be able to actually show uh, video fly-throughs of these zones with their, you know, art complete and ready to see. Um, here's a little look at the scale. Um, so there's Twilight Highlands from Cataclysm, so you can just get a vibe for how big these zones are. Um, yes, we're, we're delivering five zones, but they're, they're really large zones. And when you add that to the fact that you're not going to have access to a flying mount till max level, you can really see there's going to be a ton of content in these zones. So a little bit about Pandaria. Pandaria has been around for a long time. Um, the thing is, it's been shrouded by mist since the Sundering, so no one's really had access to it. The Pandaren have been alone there for all this time. They've been undiscovered. 
Um, as Chris was kind of mentioning in the opening, uh, the Alliance and Horde are locked in an intense battle. That's something that's always been the core of World of Warcraft, right? And we want to follow that up here. So they're in a naval battle somewhere close near to the continent, and that's how they end up discovering it. They end up having a naval battle offshore, ships end up getting blown up, and Alliance and Horde end up washing up on the shores of Pandaria. And it's been revealed thanks to the events of the Cataclysm, has finally sh unshrouded the mist and you're able to find the continent. The Alliance versus Horde aspect of this, though, is that once they land here and they find it, they realize that it's a lush land, it's full of resources and all kinds of things that Garrosh could use and things that Varian can use in their war. And so they're basically going to just destroy this land, trying to get what they can out of it. And that's where we come in. Now, we've got a whole panel on story and lore. Um, it's tomorrow at 4.15. So if you guys want some more info on that, be sure to hit up that panel. Now, besides the continent itself of Pandaria, we've also got a new start zone. So anyone that rolls a new Pandaren is going to have a new start zone to play in. What's really crazy about this start zone is that it's a turtle. <laughs> um, you guys are going to see it here in a little bit. We've got some shots of it in a video. Um, but essentially, you're playing on the back of a giant turtle. This turtle left Pandaria 10,000 years ago and started growing. And the Pandaren have always been happy with Pandaria. They haven't wanted to leave, but a few of them have gotten what we call the wanderlust. They kind of want to get out and see the rest of the world. And those Pandaren that want to do that have left on the turtle. And that's essentially where any player Pandaren will start playing from. Now, it's going to be similar to our past start experiences. It's going to be story-focused, simple mechanics, but it's going to really, really draw you into the Pandaren lore, their culture, their history, and find out really what's going on with them as a whole. Super unique, uh, Greg's going to talk about this more in a little bit, but the Pandaren are our first neutral race. So it's a race that you're going to start out as neutral and play from level 1 to 10, and then when you get to level 10, you're going to pick your faction. You'll pick Alliance or Horde at that point, and it's a one-way choice. So you'll make that choice, and then you'll decide and go forward from there. Yeah, we're pretty excited about that. It's the first time we've had a chance to do it, so it should play out really cool. So here's a look at uh, some concept art of the turtle. Like I said, it, it's a turtle. Um, so you can see there's a, there's a valley you start in and you kind of work your way around. We've got a really cool storyline here where you're trying to restore some spirits to that central temple. Um, this is the map. Um, so this entire uh, play space, the entire starting zone is playable here at the show on the show floor. So you'll be able to go over, get a Pandaren, and play all the way through. Um, that's why we have a final map here, because uh, this whole thing's playable now at the show. Um, here's some screenshots of a look. This is that central temple you saw. This is a look at the edge of the turtle, so you can kind of see the, where the turtle hits the ocean there. Uh, obviously, Pandaren love beer, so they need lots of breweries. You'll, you'll find these all over the place. And then this is a great shot showing the actual you know, the island itself that you're playing on, you're on the back of a turtle. So when we say you're on the back of a turtle, we're not trying to fake it and kind of just look like a turtle. This actually is a turtle that you're playing on. When you run up to the edge, you'll be able to see water on the edge. You'll be able to see the head. Everything will be animated. So it's going to feel really cool and unique. And here's a video of uh, some of what it looks like. Isn't that awesome? I mean, we've been seeing this stuff for a while, and I still think when we log into the game to play it, we're just always blown away by just what they were able to do with this art style specifically for WoW. 
Um, so next up, let's talk a little bit about what are you going to be killing here, right? You can't just all be happy land running around. You got to have stuff to kill.